Hello, so we continue our discussion of Markov chains by looking into the steady states. Um, so first, let's have a quick review of everything we have seen so far. We first learn about the stochastic processes. We look at the system. So one characteristic of that system that can assume different states or different values, and those values randomly change over time to us as an outside of the outside of outsider of that system. And then um, we are studying a system whose states are keep changing. And then if we are looking at these changes over a discrete time, we call that discrete time a stochastic process. And if it's continuous time, continuous time a stochastic process. Then we started modeling a stochastic processes with X sub T, which, deter which is basically that random variable, a state of the system at time T, X sub, um, X naught, for example, is the state of the system in the beginning, and this is the state of the system in the second time period, uh, and at time t. And a Markov chain was a special case, or well, one type of discrete time stochastic process in which uh, probability of the system being at a certain state at time t plus one, given that it has had this history in the previous time periods, was the same as probability of system being at a certain state next time period when we only know the previous state, x sub t. So this is basically the same as all of these. And we would uh, shortly write p sub ij instead of writing this conditional probability. The stationary, the stationary assumption told us that these probabilities do not change over time. For example, in the gambling game, uh, the probability of winning is always P. It doesn't change after a certain number of uh, games I play. Although in practice, it may not be true. For example, the more I play, the more, uh, the more I develop my skill in the game, and the more likely I am to, gain, to, uh, to win. And then we learned about initial probability distribution, Q, uh, so Q sub two, for example, is the probability of initially being in a state two. And transition probability matrix P will tell us what's the probability of going from one state to next. And we learned that we always look at the row uh, first to see where we are and the column is where we are going. So pro, for example, P, of, P sub one, one means if we are in a state one, What's the probability that in the next time period we're gonna stay, we we'll stay in, in a state, a state one? P sub one two would be if we are in a state one not right now. What's the probability of being in a state two next time period? So this is only for one time period to next. Also, we learned that uh, some of these rows is one, and we would write that like this: probability of P i j for a given i. When J is changing for a given I, so I is the row, when J's are changing for some of all of those, uh, E is just one. And, and we learned about N step transition. If you are in a certain state, what's the probability of being in another state N step from now, N time steps from now? And for that, we would just calculate P, the power of N, and then we will look into the same. Uh, row I, column J of that matrix. For example, <coughs> P sub 23, 2, 3, 4 means probability of go going from a state 2 to a state 3 in four steps. So if right now we are in state 2, what's the probability? That after four steps, we are in a state 3. And for that, we will look into the column uh, row 2, uh, column 3 of P4. Or we could multiply uh, row two of P3 by column three of P to get P4. And then we learn some uh, definitions of for the states or some classification of the states. Uh, for example, a path from I to J, it's basically means any sequence of transitions from a certain state to another. For example, this is a path from three to one. And we would say a state J is reachable from a state I if there is a path between them. For example, 
one is reachable from three, but three is not reachable from one, but because there is not a sequence of uh, transitions from one that leads to eventually to three. And then we would say I and J communicate if there is a path from I to J and there is a path from J to A. For example, one and two communicate, uh, but three and one do not communicate because three there is a path from three to one, but there is no path uh, from one to three. And the closed set would be an example one and two, where no state outside of them is reachable uh, from these states. So one and two are a closed state. A state I is an absorbing state. If once you're in it, you're gonna stay there forever. For example, in the gambling game, once you reach the state zero once your money is zero your game over or once you have four dollars you would quit the game quit the game in that case you stay in a state four or zero forever so you would say these two states are absorbing and a state would be transient if there is a way that you leave it and never be able to come back for example one two three there is a way that you go from one to zero or four once you're in zero and four, you won't be able to go back to one dollar. Same with two and three. But four and zero uh, are not transient states. They're recurrent. It means there is not, there is no way that you can leave zero and come back because for, in the first place, there is no way to leave it. And then we'll say state is transient. A state is periodic with period k greater than one. If all the path that comes back to it is a multiple of k. For example, state one is recurrent because all the path that comes back to it, for example, this path, one, two, has a length of two. Another path that leaves one comes back to one. One, two, three, four. Four is also a multiple of two, right? Let's look at another one. One, two, three, Four. That's also four. Let's look at another one. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six is also a multiple of two. So we would say one is periodic. And then a recurrent state that is not periodic is called aperiodic. A chain is called is said to be ergodic if all of the states are aperiodic, all of the states are recurrent, none of them is transient, and all of the states communicate with each other. So for example, here P1 is ergodic because all the states communicate. Uh, for example, one and three, one is reachable from three through two, and three is reachable from one, of course, directly. And that's true for all of them, all pairs here. And then none of them is recurrent. Uh, uh, none of them is transient, sorry because there is no way that you can leave three and never be able to come back. You can go to three, and through two, you can come back to it. Uh, same is true for the other two states. And none of them is periodic because for example, a path back to one is one, two, three, that's the length of three. And then one, two, three, four, that's the length of four. Three and four aren't multiples of the same number. So you would say it's a periodic. Same thing can be uh, concluded for two and three. So overall, you can say it's a period, periodic, uh, it's an ergodic chain. How about the next one? For the next one, you can say that states two and three, two and three are uh, transient because uh, from two, you can go to four or one, or from three, you can go to two, one or four. But once you're in one and four, there is no way you can't go back to three. There's no path back to three uh, or two. Sorry, uh, yes, three or two. There's no path back to two or three. So you would say two and three are transient and that violates the condition of being ergodic. Um, of course they all, and also they do not, uh, let me see, yeah, they don't communicate either. Uh, for example, one and three do not communicate. There is a path from three to one, but there is no path from one to uh, three. Okay, now we can start our 
discussion about the steady states. Steady states, uh, let's look at this example that we had before. So here we were looking at the transition probability matrix for different number of steps. So here the first step, for example, third step, those are basically transition probability matrix matrices. So this first line would be P, uh, P of P11 is 0.9, P21 is 0.2 and so forth. Same thing. By multiplying P by itself, you would get P3, for example. Uh, here you see that P21, P21, second row, first column is 44, and so forth. And we would increase N number of steps. So given that right now I'm in a state two, what's the probability that I'm always in a state one in three steps? But I want to increase that three to 10, 20, 30, 40. And I observe here that in the long term, uh, or when this n increases becomes very large, these numbers converge to a certain value. So p of n, when n is large, becomes something like this, where values in a, in a certain column are all the same. So regardless of where you are right now, you're in a state one or two, the probability of going to a state, ending up in a state one is the same. Right, so many, many steps from now, you're going to be in a state one with this probability, regardless of where you are now. We would call these pi one and pi two. So these are long, this shows us the long-term behavior of the Markov chain. So uh, let P be the trans, we wanna generalize that definition. PV the transition matrix for an N, for an S state ergodic chain. So what that's one important condition before we use a steady states formulas um, and techniques. We want to make sure that the chain is ergodic. Then there exists a vector pi uh, such that the limit of Pn when n is really large becomes uh, this matrix. So these probabilities, you see that in the first column, all of them are pi one, second column, pi two, third column, pi f, and S column, column S, they're all, uh, they're all pi S. So here I can reduce this matrix and just write pi as a vector, because it doesn't matter where you are right now, the probability of being in a state one is just the same in many, many steps when n is really large. So after a long time, the Markov chain, we would say, set, settles down. Independent, independent of the initial state i, there is a probability pi j that we are in state j. Again, many, many, many steps from now or in the long term. And we call this vector a steady state distribution or equilibrium distribution. Just note here that probability of going from i to j in n steps when n is really large is just pi j. So note that from, from here we dropped i. We dropped i and only kept j. So uh, j will be uh, the steady state. It doesn't matter what pi is. For all i's, it's going to just be pi j. All right, now we're going to go through a procedure for finding these pi's. So for example, we will, uh, uh, as an example, we'll solve this uh, transition probability matrix that, that we've been working with. Uh, for that cola example, we had two different types of cola. State one was drinking cola one, state two was drinking cola two, and this was probability of continuing with cola one in the next purchase or switching to cola two, next purchase. If you're drinking cola two, this is the probability of switching to cola one, and this is the probability of continuing with cola two in the next purchase. We, we want to use this to find these probabilities. So basically we want to find out, if we want to uh, calculate pi one and pi two. And pi one basically means uh, the probability of eventually uh, purchasing cola one, regardless of what you're purchasing right now, or the fraction of people who are purchasing uh, cola one. And 
fraction of people who are purchasing cola too. That will be in the long term. That will be pi two. Okay, so we are going to use uh, this. This we are going to start from here. Probability of going from i to j. Uh, so this is a generalized formula, not just for this example. Here we have s states. Probability of going from i to j in n plus one state one steps is uh, approximately the same as going in n steps. If n is really large, that one state, one step is not going to be important, and we call that just pi j according, according to according to uh, what we just saw in the previous slide, according to this basically. And then from there, uh, we can conclude these two these two equations are very important. And we're going to just use these two uh, to calculate this pi. So vector pi equals vector pi times transition probability matrix. And uh, we also plug in this equation to the system of equations, which is some of these pi's should be one because eventually we're gonna be in one of these states. So they are uh, mutually exclusive and we are considering all the possibilities, so some of them is just one. So let's do, let's use these two to uh, calculate pi one and pi two for this example. So I'm gonna write, I'm gonna write this one first. So pi equals vector pi equals vector pi times this, this p. So vector pi, pi one, pi two equals vector pi, pi one, pi two times p, this p. All right, then I'm gonna plug in this one too. Pi one plus pi two equals one because I only have two states. So I get this system of equation. Where did these two come from? Uh, basically pi one equals pi one pi two times this first column. First row, first column. Gives you the first element here. Uh, first row, first column. So pi one times 0 0.9 plus pi two times 0 0.2. And then first row, second column is basically first row, second column. So I do that and I solve the system of equations and I get uh, pi one equals two thirds and pi two is its complement or we know that some of them is one, pi two is gonna be uh, one third. All right, so in the long term, Two thirds of the people are going to uh, drink uh, cola one, one third are going to drink cola two, or one third are going to be the consumers of cola two. Or we can say we have in the long term, we're going to own two thirds of uh, the market if we are selling cola one. All right, let's solve another example. So if if P, the transition probability matrix is this, what are the steady state probabilities? We just want to practice one more time. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to find this number. I know that some of the rows is one, so this must be 0.4. So um, again, what I'm going to do first is to form this system of equation, vector pi equals vector pi times P, pi one plus pi two equals one. Let's expand this one. Pi one, plus, pi one, pi two equals pi one, pi two, and this is my p here. Um, and I'm gonna have two equations plus these three equations here. Pi one equals this, pi one equals this row times this column, which is, gives me this. Pi two, pi two equals this row times this column, which gives me this one. And then pi one plus pi two equals one is just here. So from here, I can conclude that pi two is actually one minus pi one. I'm gonna plug that in here. All right, so pi one equals 0 0.5, pi one plus 0 0.6. Instead of pi two, I just wrote one minus pi one from here. And from here, I conclude that pi one is six over 11 and one minus that is gonna be pi two. All right. Okay, so we learned what the steady states are, and we also learned how to calculate them. So the behavior of the system before it reaches the steady state is called uh, the transient states of the system. And 
if you're anal analyzing the system before it reaches the steady state, we say that we are doing transient analysis. And we saw in the example that we had uh, that it reached a steady state in about 10 steps, but it's not always true. Uh, it's not always 10. For different systems, these number of steps until it reaches a steady state is really different. I encourage you to look at the textbook to find out when it's shorter, when it's longer, the number of steps to reach before you reach the steady state. Um, so we just go back to our NS-step uh, transition formulas that we had. Probability of going from I to J in NS-steps is rho I column J of PN uh, to study the behavior of the system before it reaches the steady state. And when we say the transient analysis, we are basically looking at these probabilities before it reaches steady state. 